Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Monday, April 5th, 2021, and I'm here for my weekly cross-stitching update. Um, I have a few other bits and bobs that I have to share, but I'm going to wait until next week just because I want to keep this simple. I'll share what I worked on this week and then what I hope to get to this coming week. It's going to be a busy week, so my stitching time won't probably be the same as usual, but I'm hoping I'll still be able to carve out some time and get some things done. So my plans will reflect that a little bit, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So first off, I guess we always start with my travel stitching, quote unquote, <laughs> travel stitching. Um, typography. This is my temperature typography that I'm doing um, this year. It's one of my patterns in my Etsy shop. I have a bunch of different temperature designs in there. And this one is, I finished March. Yay! So here is where it's at now. This is um, one over one full crosses on two, 28 count mystery pale blue even weave. And I got the H done. And as I suspected, it warmed up and got the this brightest color so far this year. It was 85 for two days in a row, so that's that color. And the highest it's been before that was up here, I think it was 81. Um, so we're officially into spring. <laughs> it got cooler in March than it did in February. We even had some uh, 55, I think, high um, this same week. But pretty cool. It'll be fun to work into April. And the way I have designed it, April and May and June and July are double. So April will be here and then May will be here. Just to help it, um, arrange it nicely without it getting super skinny in the middle and then being super long. So I will um, keep going on that later. I usually like to work on that Saturday or Sunday, um, just once a week and do a whole letter all at once. So I'll, I'll get to that later this week to keep working on that. I'm also working on number eight of the Prim Stitch series, Pleasant and Gentle, and didn't get that much done on it this week, um, but this is the thing I'm hoping to work on mostly this week. Just, um, especially since my stitching time will be abnormal, I figured it'd be nice just to, whenever I can, I'll pull this out and work on it. And I'll, I'll still work on my iris a little bit too, I think, throughout the, the week um, to try to get some, I don't know if it'll be 65 stitches every day, but I'll try to get some time on it every day as well. So those will be my main pieces most of the week. And so here is where I got to this week. Um, this is on... 25 count vintage cloth in the color prim. You can find this fabric at the Fat Quarter Shop. And I'm doing mine one over one, and then I'm adding specialty stitches. So last time, I honestly don't know what I had done last time, but I think I did the start of the girl's bodice and maybe some of these. Um, I think I did all of this since you've seen it last. She still has a light blue here or light teal and the rest of her dress, but the dress Teal, I want to be specialty stitches, so I'm not 100% sure what that's going to look like yet. And then there's white dots in between all of these diamonds, and that's also the color in the sheep. So I'm waiting on those two colors for a little while, and I'll, I started it on the ear. His ear, face, and legs are this dark color, and he has a star in the middle. And then once that's done, then I'll work on the other specialty stitch colors. Um, I added these Jessica stitches in the flowers. Not my original choice for these, but it worked out, and I think they're a little wonky. <laughs> they get increasingly larger holes <laughs> as I did them, so I think I did them slightly different each time, but I'm not redoing them. So that's that. When you play with the stitches as you go, it, it doesn't always turn out the way you want it to, and um, sometimes it ends up better than you wanted to, I guess. Sometimes worse. <laughs> I guess it just depends. This is my um, Mill Hill Monday project, Winged Monarch. This is a Buttons and Bees kit. I, I don't know that I'll work on it today. I don't think I have enough time to split. Um, I have my, my niece's piece I'd like to work on today, so I think I might just stick with that and skip a week on this. But I have been working on the background, and this past Monday, 
I added some to it. And so here is this. Um, I think I got two strings of background done. This is on all the called for everything, perforated paper, DMC, no beads yet, um, but I believe I added a couple strings of background in, in here. So not a lot. <laughs> And it kind of all blends in. Yeah, I guess, I guess it comes down here a little bit. So I'll, I'll fill in this part next, but probably not today. I don't think I'll try to do this today. Um, so this, this side is done and then this is done. So now I'll do this part and then whatever is down here. So there's still a decent amount left of background and then I can start beading. So that's good. If today goes smoother than I anticipate, maybe I'll get to this, but I'm not, I'm not planning to at this point. Um, and then we'll talk about Iris, I guess, because that's my regular ongoing project as well. GH5, here we go. This is my Heaven and Earth Designs Quick Stitch Iris, and I'm trying to work on it every day except for Millhill Monday and put in at least 65 stitches. That didn't always happen this week. Um, some, I forget what happened but I think there were some days that it was no maybe it was last week I only got a little bit on one of the days I think I did a decent amount this week actually oh yeah one day I skipped it I skipped it on Tuesday because I wanted to finish Rosetto <laughs> I didn't figure I had time to do that and my knitting woman so I decided to skip it on Tuesday but I did it um, 61 stitches on one of the days, so it's a tiny bit short of the 65 requirement, but since I over, as I do go over a lot, I figured that was fine. I had gotten to the end of a string of something, so flexibility is key. So here is where I'm at on Quick Stitch Iris, and this is 1 over 1 on 25 count, even weave, just in white, and I'm not exactly sure where I worked. Yeah, one over one. I think I did a little bit more in here, possibly some in all over. I think I did a good, decent amount over here. Um, so it, it is coming along. I'm picking colors from the top down, left to right, where they have not yet occurred. So everything above this point is finished. I'm just filling in the bottom. I think I may have finished another color or two. It's always fun getting to the end when you finish more and more colors. Just in the normal course of things, I'm not trying to finish colors, um, but if something only has a few left, then it gets finished. <laughs> so that's always good. This one I will actually be working on Sunday as well as here and there throughout the week as I, as I can. Um, Sunday will be my focus piece on that one for, because it's a family piece, I like to give it one full day not just my 65 stitches. Um, and that will be on Sunday. Um, so you should see a little, well, depending on the rest of the week, you may see a bump up on the um, progress on that next time. So going into what I actually worked on on my focus pieces this week, the first thing I worked on on Monday was, and Tuesday, in order to finish the section, was Rosetto, my counted canvas piece. This is by Needle Delights Originals. I think I sometimes forget to tell you the companies, but this is counted canvas. It's not cross stitch, but it is very, um, if you like specialty stitches, you'll like counted canvas because it's, I don't necessarily like printed needlepoint stuff, but I like this because it's still a lot of counting um, and it's specialty stitches. So this is really fun. This time I did this square and this square because they're the same. They're just mirror images of each other. Next time, I think I'm going to be working on these two, which those look fun. They look like a lot of fun, just like this middle one was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll have to see when I can put this in my plans again. I don't have it coming out again in April, but and May is going to be Mirabilia Mania, but maybe in June. <laughs> so here is where I was able to get on Rosetto. I got the full cross done and the before picture you'll see I didn't have those top and bottom dealies and I keep my needle minder up in the top corner just so 
I remember which way is up. <laughs> And that's a little neat reminder I made myself from a, a wooden button I got at a pack in Joann's, I think. Um, so I did those two. There's no, yeah, I don't think there's any sparkly in these ones. It's some um, some thick vineyard silk, which I, it's, it's like a pearl cotton silk. And then the, and then this, the pink one is splendor silk with like four strands and then the other one is neon rays and the little the little bits in the middle but it, it's shiny but not sparkly and some of the a lot of these other ones i don't think yeah these ones don't have sparkle either so so far this this column and this column are not sparkly minus the center but all of this is has some sparkly in it so you see a little bit of that so that's fun i really enjoy this um and i wanted to make sure to get both both the matching ones done on the same time so I definitely need to plan when I bring this out to do um, at least two days on it to make sure I can get a whole um, a matching set of um, at least while we're doing these matching sets like when it gets into the smaller squares or the lines in the like border areas um, it may change but for now I want to remember to give at least two days at a time um, to make sure I can get another matching set of things because it's nice when you get in there you read the instructions to just do that do it all so you don't have to come back and relearn the instructions the next time you pull it out it's it's all fresh and ready to go um so that's nice I did enjoy that um and then I worked on knitting woman which was my last um full coverage piece that I worked on for history sprints in full coverage fanatics and this is a golden kite pattern i'm doing this for my mom and regarding history sprints i i have been working on it but i have not been posting any progress pictures and i kind of got behind on that during the first week of march and just never really had the motivation to get back into it um and get caught up so i figured eh it's not a big deal to me. The only thing that is missing out is other people seeing my post, if they even look at it. And um, I'm sharing it all right here anyways. So for me, I participated in History Sprints. It's not officially recorded in the group, but I'm okay with that. So um, Knitting Woman, let's show you that before I forget, shall we? <laughs> so I got... Um, 241 half stitches on this piece and somebody asked on my last video um, how I know how many stitches if it is a pattern that's in pattern keeper pattern keeper keeps track of that for you for you so um, I just write it down in my journal and then I can know it'll give you your daily count and so if you want to know for like a whole week how much you stitched you just need to write it down every day and then add it, add it up right now they don't have any functions to do any history of those um, numbers but they give you the daily total so as long as you write it down you can keep track of it on your own um, if it's not in pattern keeper then I am currently not counting um, because I'm not participating in any groups that require me to count a non full coverage piece so if it's a project that's not in pattern keeper I will not have stitch numbers for you um, but if it is I'll let you know <laughs> so here is knitting woman in all its glory and this is two, 22 count Ada with a two strand half stitch. There are blends in here, so I need to have the two strands. And this is the whole design. Some of the colors have come down to the bottom. What I worked on this time was skin. So there was like two or three colors, don't, maybe a tiny bit over here, but mostly in her arm and then down here in the hands um, where some of the couple lighter shades of skin. And I actually, I think I finished one of the colors maybe both at least one of the colors I actually completed so that was cool so that's how far I got in that one I'll bring that out again sometime in April I like to bring my family pieces out at least one day a week one day every month around the date of that person's birthday um that like like if your birthday is on as in this case her birthday is on the 14th so every 14th I'll bring it out um in March, it kind of 
those dates shifted a lot because of um, the history sprints and I just plugged them in where I could because I wanted the history sprints challenges to be on the specific dates as close as possible. Um, but going into April, they're back again, close to um, the family pieces are close to or, or on the day that they're supposed to be um, represented. So that's fine. I get to be back, back on that track. So the last day in March, I worked on Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needleworks. And <sighs> this is pretty. I like this one. Um, I think I've been talking too much. I'm <laughs> running out of breath. Um, I did more than I thought I would on this piece, which is really fun. I was up here in the light, light gold bands, in the specialty stitch bands, and I managed, I'm actually, you know, I've already curved the corner when I was on the orange ones. So there was one time I kept going up here on doing a specialty stitch and I got up here and I'm like, why isn't anything on the other side of the stitch? Something's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I shouldn't go that far because I'm at the edge of the page. Woohoo! So I kind of had to re and take out a couple legs of the stitch and then drop down and start the new type of specialty stitch because I realized I had gotten to the end and it was still so new being at the end um, that I wasn't going all the way to the top bar anymore. It was kind of a surprise, but I'm excited that I got what done what I got done. This is on 32 count bisque linen by Lakeside Linens. It's a called for linen. I'm also using the called for DMC. There, there's three different brands of floss they have a conversion for on the back and I'm using the DMC. So this is where I'm at now. And up close, I worked on three different specialty stitches actually. So I started out with this, um, this really big one, which I think is, oh, I forgot it again. I had it in my head. <laughs> Norwich. This, it's a Norwich stitch, this really big square one. And I finished those, I think I was about here. I finished them all the way up. That's the one I got up here and I'm like, eh, there's, there's nothing else up here. So then I realized, oh, I stop. <laughs> I'm at the edge. So then I did, these are like um, Spratt's head corner. These are Spratt's head stitches on the corners here. I did those all the way down. And then I decided to, how did that work? Maybe it was the other way around. Maybe I was doing the Norwich stitches down, did the Spratt's heads back up and then came back down with this one, which is a diamond four-sided stitch. So that's the complete specialty stitch band. It's now completely mirror image. So as soon as I finish this four-sided stitch all the way down, then I can start the next cross stitch band which will be this color and then a darker gold. So that's fun. I will definitely need to bring this out again more as well, because I do love that. I, I, I'm a sucker for specialty stitches now that I have been exposed to them. It's fun. I don't necessarily remember how they all go all the time. So when I'm playing with my prim stitch series, I'll usually just mess around with simple ones because I don't know all the fancy ones by heart. Um, but these patterns that call for the fancy ones, they, they give you instructions and diagrams and all of that. And I'll just follow the diagrams and it's fun. I really enjoy that. So then we go into April. And so in April, I got to start off with my family pieces right off the bat. I'm working on Simpsons. For my husband and this is what this one looks like and I decided to go ahead and do um, fill in from the top down like I've been doing on a lot of my other full coverage pieces this is not full coverage I'm not stitching this white out here nor the white on the inside of the circle I am stitching the paper because it is slightly different shading on that um, but I decided to go ahead and like do it from the top down just because it would help me fill things in quicker and just take away again the decision making of which color should I stitch. So I decided to do that and this is how far I got. This is on 40 count 
Vertle even weave, one over one half stitches, so it's super tiny. There's my hand. <laughs> and I have small hands too. Um, I realized all of Marge's hair, all the edge stitches around are finished. And so when I came across to pick the next color, I actually, there, I think I did two colors in here and got all of this done. The next color was actually in Homer's hair. <clears throat> so that was fun. I did like two colors here and one color here. And I got some more outlining done around Marge's face and Homer's face. A couple stitches down here. This one, that one of the ones that was coming down here was um, almost complete. I think I just have like 11 more stitches, but I ran out of thread and I was like, eh. Because there's a lot of a lot of counting involved in some of those when you get out here. And I figured, eh, I'll be fine. I'll just go back to the top and keep picking other colors. And I'm glad because the third color I picked that was over here <clears throat> ended up having a lot of stitches. So I was able to get <clears throat> um, 183 stitches. I think I was only at like 80 something before. And I was like, oh, I need to get at least to 100. Because the two that I picked that were over here were just here and there and you know not a lot of counting not a lot of stitching um so picking this one and then zooming through i ended up getting another 100 or so so that was nice so i'm i'm happy doing it that way now it, it'll be fun and make sure things get completed as they go so that one got done and then i worked on the cozy cafe club by frosted pumpkin part one the rest of the time and I'm still not done with it <laughs> there's a lot of stitching in this cup it's really cute though and the next part comes out on the 25th and all the subsequent parts will come out on the 25th every month and so this one was supposed to I think I think this one did come out on the 25th last month as well um so I think they're just gonna push everything so it's they're all on the 25th now so you still have a whole month to finish it so I'm hoping I may pull this out here and there in in hopes of being caught up before the 25th so we'll see I'm not sure how that's gonna work um it's really cute but it did take and I don't know if it was a matter of not as much stitching time or if it was just a lot of stitching needed but it was still still fun and I'm still enjoying it. So this is where I got to. And this is again on the prim, prim vintage cloth that I'm doing the prim stitch series on. 25 count. I'm doing this one over one. And as you can see, I, I added some beads to the raspberries. So they're a little bit larger than life there. I found some petite beads in my stash that were more pinky than red, like was called for. But they worked and they were um, Mill Hill 42012 was the color of the bead. And they're petite beads. So if you're doing it one over one, that bead works decently well to be a raspberry. And then I'm starting in on the, I finished the panda bear. The panda bear on the mug is all the way done. And then I have a little bit, I think two more colors in the whipped cream, the main mug colors, and then the shelf and the lace that, that it's sitting on that I still need to do. So. Um, a decent amount of stitching. I finished this top border part completely. And as you can see, I recharted it to say cocoa, raspberry cocoa instead of raspberry mocha. Cause I, they, they, they said there will be, not all of the drinks are coffee drinks. So I'm not going to have to change all of them. Um, but I don't prefer coffee at all. <laughs> so if where I can, I didn't realize until this started that they all had names. So where I can, I'm just going to edit the titles of the, the drink to be a non uh, non coffee drink so that'll be fun so we'll see if I can get to that at any point this week if not next week <laughs> I don't know I would like to get caught up before the 25th but I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna look like um, so my main I will do a, my main stitching this week will be on the prim stitch series to try to get caught up because I have I have um, the one I'm working on, which is number number eight, and then I also have number nine as well. So I could start this one too. I'm hoping I can finish number eight and get get a start on number nine at the very least. So there's that, and I also have two more family pieces that I could work on this week, which hopefully I could get to. So this is 
The Letter L Fairy by Nora Corbett. And this one I'm doing for my niece and I am doing a slight co color conversion. Mine is wearing a pink dress and a lot of the colors are just pulled from my stash. They're not what's called for just because I used what I had. I am using the call for linen. 32 count water lily. And this is where I am so far with this lovely thread that you can see through the <laughs> Witchelt fabric. This is 32 count water lily linen by Witch Witchelt, so it is see-through and stiff. Um, but I like I like the color. It's a nice pale green color, works well with these fairies. So this is where I'm starting. Probably just continue the L um, outline to go up. If I can get to that today a little bit, that would be great. So this is the one. Um, I'm probably not going to work on Mill Hill Butterfly today just because I want to try to get a little bit of this done. Because it may all be, that may be the only time I have um, to work, to cross stitch, maybe a little bit. So I'm going to, I want to get the time on this one that I can. So, um, and then the other one that I may get to on Saturday is my anniversary piece. This is the soda stitch pattern by the window in the morning. I'm doing a, a bit of a conversion on this one as well to make it a nighttime scene with some stars in the window and the couch will be more of a creamy couch instead of pink. Um, so right now I'm up in the window. So I'm thinking this coming um, weekend, I will focus more on finishing the window and getting the stars and blue filled in and all of that. So that's what I have to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> this is on 18 count um, beige Davosa, from what I understand. So this is my start. There's not a whole lot started <clears throat> because I was doing, last time I worked on this, I did a lot of <clears throat> color converting issues. So I ripped out and redid and didn't, and, and was thinking and playing. So I got a lot less done on it than I um, hope to. So hopefully this coming time I'll get that window worked on and make some more positive headway. <laughs> Not negative. <laughs> so that's that one. And I have a year and a half to finish it before our 20th anniversary. So hopefully I can get some traction on that one. Get, get it. Get some sections finished. And I will probably do back stitching as I go. Um, these ones have a lot of a lot of back stitching. So, um, as I finish sections, I'll probably backstitch. So, that's my plan with that one. And I have one more here that I forgot to mention that I worked on on Friday while I was um, visiting with Desiree, the Addicted Stitcher. We like to visit every two weeks. And while we visit, we work on <clears throat> His Name is Jesus by Joyful Expressions. And... This is a free pattern if you sign up for their newsletter. They also sell needle minders, and I actually have that one. I forgot to show you. This is one of the needle minders I have from them, and it says, um, make a joyful noise to the Lord. So they have some uh, more Christian-themed needle minders as well, and it's a really nice needle minder. Big and strong, bottle cap. That's the one on my um, Twisted Band sampler. <clears throat> so this is the one we like to, Desiree and I like to work on while we visit, and we're only working on it then. So we are staying about neck and neck, and here's where I got to. I'm trying to do one length of thread every time we visit, and so um, I did a tiny bit more than one length, technically, because I had a tiny bit of thread that was already on the needle, so I did that and then one length, so. <laughs> but I got to the next color, so yay! I mean, this is 28 count ivory Lugana. I'm doing it one over one, full crosses. And I'm using three different Victorian Motto sampler shop threads. This one is called Sampler Blues, and this one is Garden Rose. And then I have a dark gold color as well. So this will say the anointed one, um, but I didn't get that far. Next time I'll finish the word one and probably go over here. This will be another blue phrase, um, but there should be some gold phrases here in the next area so that's pretty fun I am working across the top and then coming down just because that's holding it in my hands the way I do um, that tends to work the best 
So I like to do that as much as possible on my pieces. So <sighs> I think that's everything. Um, busy week ahead, um, but I do hope to squeeze in some stitching here and there, and I will, Lord willing, come back and share you, share it with you next week, whatever I manage to get to. So that's the plan. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful beginning of your April and enjoying the either spring or fall weather, wherever you are, and um, enjoy your stitching. I know there's a lot of opportunity now, a lot more opportunity to get outside and um, play in the garden and different things like that, but Hopefully you're still finding time to put in a few stitches here and there, and hopefully I can enjoy those either on seeing what you're working on, either here on FlossTube or Instagram or wherever. So I enjoy sharing that with all of you. So I hope to come back next Monday and fill you in on what I was able to do. And until then, happy stitching. Bye.